Welcome to the Copeland Coaching Podcast, where it's all about turning your job search into a slam dunk. Your host is Angela Copeland. Welcome to the Copeland Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Angela Copeland. Live on the phone with me today, I have Michelle Cho in Los Angeles, California. Michelle is the founder of Gladio, a nonprofit dedicated to bridging the gap between education and a career path. Her website offers students assistance in selecting a career path, choosing a major, and it offers information on different entry-level positions. Michelle, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Angela. Thanks for having me on. Well, for our listeners today, I I wanted to mention that this episode is probably going to be geared a little bit towards our younger listeners. As you could tell, um, this may be good for someone who is in high school, college, or early in their career. So this will be great for our younger listeners and also for those of you who have children um, who who are younger because I do receive a lot of questions about what your kids should be doing um, for work. So with that, Michelle, um, share with us a little bit what inspired you to start your company. Well, Gladio is a nonprofit. Um, I started this, I would say probably the idea of it started a few years ago. Um, I actually started with my sister. Um, We've been a mentor and a volunteer for kids primarily in low-income neighborhoods, but also um, we've been invited by different community agencies, community nonprofits, like, um, you know, Big Brother, Big Sister, Boys and Girls Club, things like that. And I kept seeing whenever I was doing that so few of the kids had career role models in their lives. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times their career awareness often started with what their parents did or what their siblings did. And then it kind of ended with what they saw on TV. And, you know, I didn't really think that that was true until, you know, I would, in the beginning of every workshop or every, every volunteer session, I would ask the kids to tell me which careers they knew about. And I just kept hearing the same ones over and over again. And, and this is not even an exaggeration. A lot of the times it was, you know, professional basketball player or, mm-hmm. you know, rapper or actor. It's because they saw those on TV, and especially with all the reality shows out there. I mean, it just shows that, you know, you could pursue a career as a musical artist because there were so many reality shows. And I kept hearing that over and over and over again. And for the other kids, they often relied on their teachers and their guidance counselors to help them with any other further career exploration. But I found that, especially in low-income neighborhoods and schools that are in rural areas, schools have very few career resources. And they rely a lot of the times on their guidance counselors as well as volunteers in their community. You know, and, and if they didn't have that many volunteers in the community coming in for, you know, a career day, you know, they, they weren't going to be exposed to careers. So, I mean, Gladio really started because I wanted to create a resource that exposed and inspired kids to all careers and industries, regardless of where they lived or their socioeconomics or how well-funded their school was. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I was thinking of something as you were talking because you make so many good points there. Um, I have a child in my life who is very special to me. And I'm trying to think, it was about 10 years ago. She was visiting me for a week and, um, you know, just spending some time here in Memphis. And her parents are actually in the military. So that's what she's been exposed to, which is, you know, a great career path. Um, but at the time, I was a, like, director of digital marketing at an organization. And she was, God, I don't know how old. She was probably about nine. And, you know, kids just say what they think. And <laughs> and she said to me, um, Angela, when are you going to get a career path? Like, when are you going to get a career? And I was like, I worked so hard to be a director of internet marketing. (laughs) And uh, the very next day I said, you're coming to work with me. We're going to work (laughs) to show, to show her like an office. And I gave her all sorts of branded tchotchkes from work. And I was like, you know, there's other kinds of jobs. Like, like, let's go check this out. I know I hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I just I that was like the one question in life I was never expecting was when are you going to get your career together? <laughs> <laughs> 
So <laughs> anyway, so what how, are you going to do when you grow up? I know, right? I was like, oh man, I th- I thought I had. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, how long were you mentoring? You mentioned that this kind of idea came. Have you always mentored like your, your whole life or is this something you took up uh, when you were in California? Well, I was doing a lot of tutoring when I was in college for um, an organization outside of Stanford called Ravenswood Reads, where we just teach kids in East Palo Alto um, how to read. Um, but then my strong suit is not tutoring. Mm. It's more, um, it's, then I started tutoring with an organization called First in the Family, which basically helps kids who are first in the family to go to college with their college application. And believe it or not, so many of kids have never even heard of the FAFSA. Mm -hmm. So most of my volunteer work was helping kids fill out their college applications, help them with their essays, help them fill out the FAFSA. And then I, about five, I think it was about seven years ago, I started mentoring, which is, it's a little more difficult because it's mentoring one child for four, and the commitment is four hours a week. Mm -hmm. And you really, really understand the difficulties and the nuances and the things that kids need when, I mean, if you're not a parent and I'm not a parent, Mm -hmm. is if you mentor somebody for four hours a week. And that's really where I started to see um, a lot of the gaps as well as a lot of the mentor agencies wanted to, you know, help people with careers, but a lot of the mentors could only really speak to their career, Mm -hmm. right? I could pretty much only speak to my career. um, And I was working in film development back then. And um, what if my mentee did not want to do anything in the industry that I wanted to? Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to only expose them to my career. So I kept seeing that over and over and over again. And I kept seeing guidance counselors, you know, asking for, you know, community volunteers, corporation volunteers to come in and talk. But, you know, once, once somebody, especially when, especially if it's a woman, if they have a career and they have a kid, it's very difficult for them to leave work and then go take through two or three hours to volunteer at a school. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I was I was really helping recruit mentors for this mentor agency in Oakland and such a time getting mentors. And it's a huge commitment and just even, like, the driving, you know, during traffic hour. I mean, it would take them an hour to get to the school. And a lot of people can't pick up, because a lot of times I had to pick up my mentee from school, mm-hmm. and that's at 3 o'clock. It's, like, in the middle of the day. So, I mean... I was, I mean, I really started Gladio because I just saw so many gaps and so much difficulty in getting volunteers to help kids, expo- you know, help expose kids to careers. And I'm like, there's got to be a better way. I mean, we are in the age of technology where information can be get, you know, be received anywhere. Like, there's got to be a better way. Mm-hmm. I completely, I completely agree. Um in so many ways. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep my, my personal stories to a minimum. <laughs> but I, I can really relate um, to what you're you're talking about. So I know that one of the things, you know, you're trying to do is help, like you said, sort of bridge that gap between education and career. You know, in your mind, why is it so hard to sort of go from, even if it's like college, why is it so hard to go from that to figuring out sort of like what you want to be? I think that's kind of like a two, there's two buckets. Mm -hmm. One, um, knowledge and accurate information. And I think those are similar but different. Uh, First, like I said, I've done a lot of career exploration workshops. And most of the kids, when you ask them, you know, name 10 careers, I can't get all the kids in the classroom to name 10 different careers. Mm. And, I mean, it's really hard to pursue something. I mean, we're asking these kids, uh, teachers want their kids to work hard and to persevere, you know, and to have grit. You hear that word all the time these days in the education world. But it's really hard to pursue something diligently if you don't know why you're pursuing something. And so many of the kids didn't know, so they didn't have the knowledge of all the careers out there. I mean, even your career, you know, like head of digital marketing, that's a huge career, and so many, um, so many companies have it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you don't even, you know, that's something that, and it's actually very interesting. I think a lot of kids would really, really be interested in that career. Mm-hmm. Second, I think it's accurate information. And let's say you do, you know, let's say a kid's like, okay, I do want, I want to pursue this career. But a lot of the times they have no idea how to pursue it. 
So it's not that, so there's one bucket of kids who don't even know what to pursue. And then there are people who really want to pursue a certain career, but they have no idea how to pursue it. And there are probably a lot of reasons for this, but there's one huge one. Most of the career resources that are online are actually lead generation websites for for for-profit colleges. And I discovered that. Yeah, I discovered that when I was a mentor and I was trying to help my mentee learn about video game design. And so I was Googling it. That's what we do. When we don't know something, we Google it. Mm-hmm. And I just kept seeing, you know, you know, websites after websites um, that basically see, I don't know if you've seen them before, where they're just like, pursue a career in, you know, let's say video game design. Mm-hmm. And how do you get this job? And it says, go to this college get this degree, and then you'll just get the job in that industry. Mm -hmm. And we all know that it's not that simple. It doesn't really work in a three-step process. I mean, there's so many other things that you have to do. What we do differently is we we don't have boilerplate information. We interview two to three actual working professionals, and we ask them about their particular path, like how they got their foot in the door, how they climbed the ladder. And you know what? A lot of the times, if we're interviewing two to three people, they all have different, they have all different paths. So, and so, we mm-hmm. try to, so we try to represent all of the different ways you can get into one path. Like even in, uh, to be a video game designer, there's four different entry points. And I would have never known that if I had just done research online. You know, I had to actually talk to a video game designer. I mean, you could, one way to be a video game designer is you can build your own video game and submit it to contests. Right? You can start off as a game tester, and a lot of the game testers don't even major in video game design. Or you can actually study video game design and then get it thought that way. I mean, there's so many different ways, and I feel like the resources out there, do not, they're not comprehensive enough. So a lot of the kids, when, they, when their teacher or the guidance counselor says, just go online, they get discouraged because it's like, okay, go to this college, get this degree, and then you'll get it. And they're smart enough to know that it's not that simple. No, for sure. Absolutely. So when you interview these professionals and you kind of get a sense for how they got into their careers, like, is that, are you videotaping it? Is that where the videos come in the video section? Or how do you sort of get that information out to the people who come to your website? Um, you know, we do it old school before we, we do do, we submit, well, we have a form that we send them and it's a pretty extensive, um, question and answer. I mean, it's a forum. It's about 25 to 30 questions. And then we do a follow-up interview on the phone. Mm. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of holes. I mean, a lot of the times when people fill out the information, um, you, you know, there's certain things that they assume that, you know, a kid would know about and, or even I would know about and I don't just because I don't work in that industry. And so, I mean, the whole process takes about, I would say about five, five to six, five to six hours per interviewer. Like, review, I review the, um, the submission of the question and then look at the different holes in the questionnaire to see if like, if it's not like I say user friendly or young kid friendly. And then I call them and we follow up and it's pretty extensive. The videos are a little different because for me, the videos are more storytelling. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much about the nitty gritty aspects of, you know, what you need to study, you know, how to get the first job, but it's really more of an inspirational thing. Um, the videos are more of our storytelling component because I think to your to answer your question to go back, I think the first part is you know increasing knowledge and accurate information, and then another thing that was totally apparent in my volunteer work is a lack of belief and hope. Hmm. And and I can only speak from my experience, and I'm I have a volunteer in every school in the United States, but I kept hearing, you know. You know, you should you should really pursue. You know, you should really pursue that career. I would hear phrases like, "Well, I'm not rich," or "I don't know anybody in that industry," or "I'm a girl." I mean, I kid you not; those are the types of things that I've heard from young people. And I, and from somebody who has a background in entertainment and in filmmaking, I understand the significance of media and of stereotypes. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's psycho- psychologists all around the country do studies about stereotype threat, and you know, they're trying to figure out why there aren't more women in tech. And there's, that is something that we address through our video content. We tell stories of diverse and relatable individuals in a variety of careers and industries. Mm-hmm. So we want to show all walks of life, you know. So I always try to pick, 
individuals who are kind of, I call, Mm anti-stereotype. So if it's a woman entrepreneur or if it's an African-American video game designer, if it's a Hispanic Hispanic female engineer, I mean, those people exist. You you don't see them on TV. And I kept hearing over and over again, well, I can't do this career because I am X, Y, Z. And so there is a psychological element to it. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard because definitely the media images are out there. But I think the other part that sometimes we don't always think about is that when you're growing up sort of lower income or in an environment where that's whatever the path you're pursuing is not normal, um, even the adults in your life discourage you from that path sometimes. Um, I know, like for me, my undergrad is computer and systems engineering, and Uh I received quite a bit of negative feedback before getting that degree, um, that it, it was not a good path for me. And, um, you know, for sure, I think putting out positive messages, putting out uh, things that are different than what you normally see, it, it can be helpful. But it is it is tough because as a kid in that situation, you're overcoming more boundaries than just the fact that you're poor. I mean, it's it's just, yeah. there's so much. But I think a website like this is, is perfect because even though it may take you six hours to interview someone and get all that information, once you've got it on your site, thousands of kids can see it and access it. And that's information that otherwise just wouldn't be available in that way. Exactly. So, exactly. It's scalable, yeah. Yeah. So what kinds of things do you offer? Like what kinds of programs does Gladio have that helps young people to sort of figure out their career? Well, we do two parts. Um, most nonprofits are local, mm-hmm. usually, right? Like, um, you know, they're working with a specific group of individuals in a community. So we have an, an on the ground, we're on the ground component where we do career exploration workshops for low income schools and low income neighborhoods in Los Angeles and in the, mostly in the East Bay area, mm-hmm. up in the Bay Area. Um, but the main program we do and is is basically creating this virtual career day online. Um, where I said we interview working professionals, we create these career profiles that are on our website. We also create infographics. Mm. As you know, young people like to see content visually. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we have been creating infographics for each one of our profiles just to make it more aesthetically pleasing. And and we just found that that, that young people just like that better. Um, We also, we try to create as much as dynamic and multimedia content um, as possible, and we're starting this year to to complete media and entertainment, tech, and skilled trades. Those are the three industries that we're focusing on in 2017, and we want to grow our library of content. Um, all of that content, whether it be infographics, our website, we, we also have a um, like a personality and int- uh, personality strengths and industry quiz. Um, and we also create videos. We give all of that content for free to high schools all around the country, mm. and we do that. We do that through our social media. We do that through our um, our website. But we also have an email newsletter that we send out to over thirty five thousand people all over the country. Um, whenever we update our content, wow. and we get about a hundred. Yeah, we get about one hundred and twenty signups per day um, asking for this content. So we got to turn it out because, you know, and we also have a, a little a box on our website, you know, if there isn't a career that's on there right now, please suggest it. And we get about seven seven new careers, you know, people asking for seven new careers a day. So we are trying to keep up with the demand right now. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned a personality assessment. Is that the Gladio or Gladio quiz that... That, that you're talking yeah. about? Okay. What So what is that quiz and how, like, how does it help us figure out what we should be? Well, it's primarily for people who just have no, no idea where to start. You know, they don't know what industry they're, industry, mm-hmm. in, industry they're interested in. They just, they just don't really know where to start. And it's a pretty fun and easy quiz. Um, it's not um, hard or anything like that. I mean, some of the questions are like, what's your favorite board game? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a really a quiz to try to hone someone's individual personality strengths. Um, and we actually use Paul's, um, a personality codes, and that's what the Bureau of Labor Statistics used to classify most of the careers out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's basically, there's 
five different types of personality um, personality strengths. There is the builder, which is um, people who like to work with their hands and build things. I mean, a lot of these classifications are very, very self-explanatory. Um, there's the creator, and that's usually people who like art. They enjoy creating new things and ideas. Uh, the third one, I think, is the organizer and people who like structured tasks, working with numbers, records, um, but likes to work with data. Uh, there's the people person, um, people who enjoys working with and helping people. There is the persuader. I like to call this person who can anybody who can sell water to a whale. You know, somebody who's good at <laughs> selling and influencing and leading. And then there's the problem solver, um, someone who enjoys analyzing um, and, and solving problems. And I think the problem solver is, I guess, the personality type that most people think is intelligent. Okay. You know, that's what people think. Okay, if you're intelligent, then you are usually the problem solver. And I think in most schools, what I say in my career workshops, and this really resonates with young people, is there are many different types of person. Multi- there's multiple intelligences. Mm-hmm. There's many different types that are that are intelligent. And so I try to create a paradigm shift between... Um, how intelligent you are or how are you intelligent? Mm-hmm. Instead of how intelligent are you, how are you intelligent? And so when they take this quiz and they realize they're like, oh, I'm a creator and an organizer. And w- when they're like, when they hear over and over again, they're not smart because they're not good at math or they're not good at science. But you know, in the real world, there's a variety of careers with a variety of different personality strengths mm-hmm. that are necessary. I mean, if you're a persuader, I mean, that's a lot of jobs. Right, a lot of sales jobs. Uh, most entrepreneurs are persuaders, and that kind of personality strength is not necessarily considered smart in high school. And a lot of times, when kids hear that they're not smart or they're not, they're, they're just they're just the bottom of the class. They don't have the motivation even to try. Mm-hmm. I think the quiz is like when I do the workshops. That's like the first thing that we do. We take the quiz, and I'm trying to get kids to think of how are they intelligent, not how intelligent are they. Oh, that's great. That's really great. And it sounds like you're kind of linking the type of intelligence up with certain kinds of careers. Is that kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's super helpful. I think, um, you know, I talk to a lot of uh, adults mid-career and they're having the same question. So it's a great thing to start so young. I don't, yeah. 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 I don't know that it ever kind of ends. And I think, honestly, there's... Oftentimes, I actually met with someone this week who said, gosh, I just feel like everyone but me has found a really, um, you know, they've known what they wanted to be and they've known the path and they've been on this straight path to get there, except for me, I've been on this kind of winding path. And I have to say, I've rarely ever met anybody who's known exactly what they wanted to be since they were young and they've pursued this one path. I mean, it's it's a process, you know, and... Um, so so anyway, oh, but, agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I think this kind of thing can kind of help take some of the stress out. It can introduce people to things they may not have thought about or never been exposed to. So that's that's great. Um, well, so I'm curious, say that we've kind of gone through your program and we've picked out sort of a direction. We've enrolled in college. We're in college. One question that I often get is, you know, what kind of job should my college student do or what kind of job should I do while I'm in college? And I was just wondering, sort of based on your maybe your professional experience, um, what tips you might have for someone who's looking for work while they're in school? Well, hands down, I say get an internship. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that a lot have to make a certain amount of income to pay for their you know, everyday bills, their books, their rent. Um, and actually, we have an internship program, and a lot of those kids do have those jobs. But on top of that, especially if there's an unpaid internship, I mean, especially if there's an internship, a lot of times kids, if it's, if it's unpaid, they don't think that it's necessarily worthy of their time. But it is, because if it's an industry, if it's an internship in the industry that you're interested in, that is crucial to so many things. Not only is it good for your resume, but you can't really know a career until I feel like you're exposed to it. And when you're doing an internship, you're exposed to the inner workings of that company, of that career, of an actual individual who works that career. And and also, it's, it's, it's the best way to meet other people. And I'm pretty sure on your podcast, you've been talking about networking and things.
things mm-hmm. like that. I mean, the best jobs and the best opportunities come through meeting people and those people telling you about certain opportunities. I mean, you hear all the time recruiters, I've talked to recruiters, and they're like, most of the times we kind of already, you know, have been referred a few candidates, and then we go on monster.com just to, like, you know, do be a little more comprehensive with our job search, uh, our recruiting search. But, I mean, it's crucial to start meeting people in the industry, and the best way to do that is an internship. Mm-hmm. And just because it's unpaid doesn't mean it's not valuable. You know, it's it's your ent- entree into an industry. And especially if you're pursuing a creative career w- where you need a portfolio, I mean, it's mm-hmm. not just enough to go to college and to have a recommendation where you have to actually have a, a portfolio. That includes careers in media and journalism. You have to have portfolios of clips that you've written. Um, if you're a graphic designer, you have to have a portfolio. A lot of the time, p- um, I think recruiters want to see um, a portfolio where it's associated with a company. Mm-hmm. I mean, that makes that particular work even more important. Like you were able to produce, you know, a body of work that actually was created in a professional environment. Um, it's not just good to create a portfolio that you just did in college. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to have done something in a professional environment. So yes, I think you have to get an internship, even if it's unpaid, um, while you're in college. I totally agree. I actually did four internships in college (laughs) and um, three of them were paid and they were paid almost like a full-time job, which is great. Um, Oh, that's great. But I started in engineering and my first two jobs, I worked um, for General Motors and I loved it, but I also learned that it wasn't the industry for me. Um, And so when they offered me a full-time job when I graduated from college, I I declined it. But if I hadn't worked there for a couple of years, uh, a couple of summers, um, I would not have realized that, you know, uh, being so young and being a woman uh, and not to come down on on them as a company, but uh, people would throw things at me like in the... um, on the assembly plant floor just to try to get my attention or, you know, call me little girl or things that, um, you know, I just decided that maybe this isn't the environment I want to work in. (laughs) So, wow. Which is, I mean, you know, um, not to be, you know, down a negative path, but there's things that you learn through an internship about what you like and dislike in a work environment that you would never know if you, if you didn't work. You know, and and it's really just, it's not enough to have just a college degree anymore. Like, nobody cares if you got good grades and have a degree. I mean, to me, that's kind of, um, it's just, it's expected. You know, what makes you, it's like, what makes you special? What makes you different? Uh, Like you said, whether it's a portfolio or it's experience or it's your network, you know, you have to have something that's going to one-up you above other candidates. So... Yeah, but so speaking of intern program, you mentioned that you have one, and I saw on your website that you've actually employed 16 students, which is awesome. Um, I'm curious to know, first, like, what kind of interns do you typically have? And then if we're interested, if we're listening, how can we apply to be an intern at Gladio? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say our college interns are spectacular. I mean, they are talented, hardworking, and just really mission and passion, passionate kids. I mean, they're kids who are dedicating their time to help other kids, right? So we call them the Gladio League. I mean, it's Aww. a little cool. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a superhero theme. If you go on our website, you'll see that we have a little superhero theme. Um, well, our interns are diverse in geographic location. I mean, they're all across the country. We have interns in New York. Miami, Bay Area, uh, L.A., and uh, San Jose. I mean, we just have interns everywhere. And that was, that was, it was designed that way. Um, we want to create content that's relevant and relatable to all kids. And the best way to do that is to have college interns who are everywhere. You know, they're diverse in background skills, perspective, geographic location. Um, but they all have one similarity. They all really want to help other kids. And that's pretty rare to find, I think, um, in such young people. And so that's why I'm really, really proud of them. But since our mission is to help young people find and pursue their dream career and we create career content, I found that it was very important to have young people part of the creation process. 
um, not just the content create process, cr- content creation process, but also the marketing and the distribution of the content. Because as we know, young people they communicate differently than even people you know in their mid to late thirties. Um, young people are much more visual; they like videos and they love social media. So our the Gladio League is a huge. I mean, the, the Gladio League is part of creating our social media platform as well as our infographics. And we just started a few months ago a, um, a, a, a feature series called Career Highlights where co- our college student reporters, oh, we cool. call them, uh, they go out and they interview inspirational people in a variety of careers and do kind of like an FAQ, a Q, a Q&A with them. And that gives them an opportunity to meet people in their interested industry. But that we also wanted the, the students to be the reporters because they're the ones that have the questions, right? Like, and a lot of those questions, the career highlights is not so much the nuts and bolts of the career, but it's really about that individual's career story. Mm. Like, what struggles did they go to? go through? Where do they come from? What were they interested as a kid that now has translated and parlayed into this career? So it's really interesting what these students come up with as their questions. Um, and you really get to know what young people want to know from adults through this, through this series. And they get to meet adults. They get to meet people who are working in their industry. So it's, it's kind of great for them. I mean, they're basically doing an informational interview, but they're writing a feature on it. Yeah. And in 2017, we're actually going to start doing that in a video format. Some of the students were like, you know what, I think I can do it as a video, which is even better, you know, which is even more entertaining and, and I think inspiring. Oh, that's awesome. So if we're interested to be an intern, do you have like a way to apply on your website? Yes. So if you go to our website, www.gladio.org, Gladio is G-L-A-D-E-O dot org, um, go to internships, there's a tab on the home page, or you can just do www.gladio.org slash Gladio League. Oh, that's and great. You can get to the page as well. Perfect. Well, so another related question, if we're listening and say we're already mid-career, like we're in our 40s or something, and but we're inspired by the idea of this website, is there any way that we can, you know, help you to help these, these students? Is there... Um, a way to sort of raise our hand to be someone that gets interviewed or, I mean, what can we do? Yes, we are always looking for people to, one, share their career story as well as share the career expertise. Um, so that information is also on our website. If you want to volunteer, go to www.gladio.org slash volunteer, and there's a little form you can fill out, um, and it tells you, you know, if you want to be part of our volunteer um, our volunteer community where you can share your career story or not. I mean, if you don't want to go through the form, you can also just email me at um, contact at gladio.org. Perfect. Perfect. Well, so I feel like we know where to go for your website. Where are you on social media? Where can we find you? Um, we are on Facebook at, and our, our handle is gladio.org. And then we're on Twitter as well as Instagram at gladio underscore org. Okay, perfect. So I will put this information in the show notes for anyone listening. And, you know, this has been just fantastic. I'm so glad this tool is available and for, you know, all kids um, all over the country and the world. So thank you very much, Michelle, for joining me today. This has been super. Thank you so much, Angela. And thank you for your podcast. Oh, thank you. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks to everyone who sent me questions. You can send your questions to Angela at copelandcoaching.com. You can also send me your questions via Twitter. I'm at Copeland Coach. And on Facebook, I'm Copeland Coaching. Don't forget to help me out. Subscribe on iTunes and leave me a review. Thank you for listening to the Copeland Coaching Podcast today with your host, Angela Copeland. Tune in next time to get more great tips on turning your job search into a slam dunk.